Hey guys, and welcome to Nameless, the one thing you must recall. So, we finished Yoon Ho's route, and I only fucked up once! Which, I'm kind of impressed with myself, I thought I would fuck up a lot more with that. <laughs> but no, I, it actually wasn't all that bad. So, now I'm kind of curious as to if I unlocked anyone, so let's see. <gasps> I have a piece! Ooh. So, Yunho is unlocked and done. <gasps> I can do Tay now! I can't do Red though, but Tay is available. But I did say I was gonna do Lance and then Tay, so. But it's very, it's very, it's very tempting to just skip and go to Tay immediately! Very, very tempting. But. I did say that I was going to leave Tay as the third choice, so I will go with my word and go with Lance. Right, we have to go through the prologue all over again. Blinding white light fills my sight. My arms and legs feel lighter, and soon I feel my body hover. Where am I? Maybe in a dream? I gather the strength to walk forward, despite my feet barely touching the ground. No matter how far I go, white space continues without end. I open my eyes, but can't see or hear anything. I stop and look around. This place, so pure and clean, but for some reason I feel sad. This place, surrounded by glimmering light, white as snow, is breathtakingly beautiful. But such extreme beauty can only belong in another world. I don't think the image is getting clearer necessarily with that, but maybe it is. I feel like the silhouettes are a lot clearer, kind of, because this looks like the wizard from Dandelion, and this looks like it would be whoever the mystery boy is. something blurred far away. I couldn't see properly because of the glaring light coming at me from all directions. All I could make out was a tall person and another slightly shorter. Two people? Are you really okay with that? Yes. Do you believe? Who are they? What are they talking about? I do not know. Your answer does not match your actions. Ugh. Alright. This is what suits you right now. Do as you please, except remember that you are responsible for the consequences of your choice. Do not forget that everything was done solely by your own will. I understand. Now then, take this. The tall man hands over something. That's different from the last time, isn't it? And the man who took it looked down for a while and slowly turned to my side. His lips seemed to move a little. What? He seems to be talking to me. Let's go a little closer. Suddenly, fierce wind started to rip through. The wind seemed to will me out of this place. Hold on! Not yet! Wait! I haven't... Feathers. Along the wind, a maraud of feathers flew around and blocked my sight. I parted through the wind, blowing towards me, and made my way to him with all the strength I had. The moment I thought I finally reached him... I fell into a bottomless pit along with countless feathers. This is different dialogue! Don't worry. You will soon remember. I was woken up by the noisy alarm clock. Is it morning? Ugh, but I think I was dreaming about something just until now. I keep tracing my memory, but still fuzzy from sleep, I cannot remember. I don't dream often, so the feeling after having one feels strange. The most recent dream was... Right, it was then. It was when Grandpa died about three years ago from now. Yeah! See? Three years ago! Jesus. This game is so inconsistent. The day I fell asleep, tired from remembering my Grandpa, who was no longer by my side, I had a dream about waking up to a peaceful morning with him. In my dream, I saw him smiling and waking me up as always, telling me, 
You'll be late if you don't get up now. And then the next morning when I realized that a smile was all just a dream. Oh no, this won't do. Let's just think happy thoughts in the morning. I wonder if I should skip this. I'm tempted to. Because I already know, like, everything. But there was that moment when dialogue was different. And the skip option doesn't always stop when there's... But then again, it is the prologue, and I can't imagine anything changing too much, so I guess I'll skip stuff for now. Wait, wait, wait. It stopped with this. Why? Every morning I say hi and tell them about my day when I come back home. People will think I'm crazy, but it doesn't matter. I'm the only one who knows about it anyway. I just... knows about what? What the... <laughs> Just by the fact that I say hi? Every morning... Just the fact that I say hi, I think is what this difference is, okay. I just have to be careful. I'll just make excuses. Tell others I'm just an ordinary girl who likes movies and music. No one knows that I like dolls if I don't show it, so all I have to do is keep quiet. It's more comfortable to just go along with the crowd than to reveal what I like. Huh, this is different different dialogue in the prologue. Okay. I don't want others to know about my strange taste. If they do think I'm strange, I have neither the courage to ask them to understand, nor the strength to withstand their patronizing looks. I really love dolls, but I can't tell anyone that. Yeah, you loved one so much you became its girlfriend. But then you disappeared. Darn, I'll be late. I have to get ready. Skip all that, because it's not new. This is new! It's stopping at new dialogue! Okay, maybe they fixed it, since the last that guide was updated. But what the hell? There's new stuff in the prologue? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going along with this. At the first day of school, being an introvert, I was just carefully peering around the class without any new, without any new friends. Huh? It's kind of noisy by my side. What is this? Did my mom lie to me? This place was supposed to be filled with cute guys. I applied because even the uniform was cute. She totally lied. If there's no romance in an academy, then it's not... Then it's so not an academy. It's a prison camp! Ugh! Wow, she's pretty. She has a dirty mouth, though. I turned and saw the long-haired girl grieving to the girl with the boyish cut. They seemed to be close calling each other by first... Fist names? Fist names. All I can think of is like a nickname you would give someone's fist for when they're fisting you. That's literally all I can think of when it comes to that. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? First names. Not fist names. Oh my god, no. No. Zoe, your voice is too loud. Everyone will hear. Whatever. It's true anyways. Shinbi, I know you're thinking the same thing, aren't you? It's not like we just became friends. I know everything. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's Shinbi. Hmm. The girl making the fuss is called Zoe, and the short-haired girl must be Shinbi. That Shinbi girl is pretty... cute. No, cool. But I mean, sipping milk out of a straw? That's kind of not what she looks like. Unlike the chic and distant look she supported, she was kind of adorable sipping milk out of a straw. Oh god, you know how happy I was when mom told me to live with you? Free from all that annoying nag! The era of freedom without annoying parents, and a new academy! I thought I was finally going to live a life full of pink roses. She slowly looked around the class with squinted eyes. I mean, this isn't pink, it's gray. GRAY! She sighed heavily again. The sigh was so big that all the boys stared at her. They were whispering and were not giving her kind looks. Mmm, this is not good. She's going to have a bad first impression. What a shame, she's so pretty. 
But we have to spend three years here, so who knows? It only takes a second to like someone. Oh, wait. Having finished her milk, she stood up to throw away the empty carton. Wow. So tall. She, she's like a model. Her slender figure worked together with her long legs. And that indifferent cold look she had gave her in... She had gave her an exotic feel. All the surrounding girls looked at her with envy. That seems impossible unless we have transfer students. <laughs> and what so happens to happen? Transfer students! And firstly, I see no one who can compete. Compete? With who? This right here. This! Zoe pointed at Shinbi's face. Do you know how many years I've spent with you? I was with you before I could even talk. Imagine what I must have been like when I grew up with you. It's all your fault that I don't have a boyfriend. You're cuter than most gu- What? She caught my eye. What do I do? I must have creeped her out. No, she's coming! What do I do? Uh, uh apologize? Hey. Uh, uh, hey. Don't you agree? Isn't she be cuter than all the boys in our class combined? Isn't she? Huh? Huh? I see that face every single day. No wonder I'm so picky. Yeah. Well, whatever. Anyways, what do you find most important in a guy? What? Uh, um, it's... The most important thing in a guy? I mean, I... I thought of just one thing. I thought of the one thing I searched for when looking for a doll to buy. Um, the... the face? At that moment, I thought I saw the boys afar stare at me. Darn, I was too honest. As soon as I answered, I wanted to punch myself in the face for being so blunt. When I was about to break out and go in a cold sweat, the eyes of the girls in front of me widened. And she has hard eyes. Oh no. Right, right, I was so not wrong. The world calls me a snob, but everyone's the same inside. Hey, you get me. What's your name? Oh, I'm... Oh, okay, the name suits you. Nice to meet you. I'm Zoe, and this is Shinbi. Hey. Oh, hey. It's not common to find a friend who gets you like this. Let's hang out together. That day after school, as Zoe preached on about a girl's happiness is all about eating off the charm of cute guys, we had our own little inaugural ceremony at the nearby fast food joint. I felt like I was swearing an oath to the CIA, but all that was left in my hands was... Spicy rice cakes for four, tempura for three, fish cakes for five, a bill outlining all the food. Because of Zoe, who told me she'd gift me with the joy of paying to celebrate our new relationship, I had to pay for everything that day. <laughs> Have I just been ripped off? It was recess. I was seriously pondering about what true friendship was when Zoe came to talk. So, what do you think? What? Sorry, I missed it. Say that again? Hey, I was talking here. Are you staring at nothing again? Anyways, about this here. Which design looks better to you? Oh, okay, so I guess we're back to regular prologue stuff. Oh. And now we're suddenly not! What the hell happened? She handed you a magazine, top five cute, cute dresses in trend for girls, model that has Shinbi. Okay. Hmm, for me, this. The other one's cute, too, but I think this would look better on you. Really? Then should I get this? Will I be in the center of attention when I go out wearing this? <laughs> I will definitely get a boyfriend this time! Is it because I've been playing with dolls for... X amount of years now? Because I'm assuming that's what that means. I've come to have quite an eye for clothes and styling. So Zoe comes to me to ask about fashion from time to time. She says my eyes are exact or something like that. But honestly, Zoe, you're noticeable enough without all that. I look at my fancy and pretty friend. Because of what she said on the first day, boys haven't been interested in her. Well, at first they seemed like they were unable to. But despite what I'd expected, as time passed, Zoe came to command all the boys' attentions. Cute for being honest. Boys are such... All is okay in the end if you're pretty. Even if you shout out loud, looks equal boys! If you're cute like Zoe, then all works out. To be honest, I don't hate Zoe's personality. Actually, I kind of like it. And everyone else must have felt the same as soon as they were hypnotized by her straightforward charm. As if to prove her popularity, Zoe became our class president. 
Anyways, Shinbi, you're everywhere on the magazines nowadays. Isn't it hard? A bit. It's okay, though. Ugh, you have a tough. You should have said no like I did. Right, they were casting. I got a diary. Okay. Also, since I finally got to a part where I can just kind of pause all of this, skipping and whatnot, um, did anyone else notice that the opening was a little bit more revealing as to who the two individuals were, as well as the mystery boy? Like, it panned up slightly more on the mystery boy's face, and it gave you a more clear silhouette-ish of the that one individual and how it looked a lot like the wizard from Dandelion. I could totally see him being involved in this because he was a sadistic motherfucker. But, yeah, I'm noticing slight differences in the opening around those two. But other than that, it looks pretty much the same. Anyway... Time to continue skipping stuff that we've already seen until we've reached something we haven't already seen, I suppose. However, let's save in space. I don't fucking know, space one, I guess. First day. Oh! New dialogue already. Okay. Also, did that page that picture become a little bit more clear? Or was it always like that? Hmm. Sure enough, the class started to stir as soon as we entered. Nothing surprising. I mean, considering all that fuss in the morning, silence would have been strange. After looking around the class with his serious face, Lance opened his mouth. He looked colder and a bit nervous at seeing all those people. Do I sit here? He pointed at the empty seat right behind me. The original owner of the seat followed his parents and moved to the countryside. I was about to say that it's probably okay when he strode into the class. I guess he doesn't need my answer. Oh my god! What? Hearing Zoe's voice, I turned around. If there's one single reason why I was born, that... Th that is... Cute boys! I turned around as I couldn't bear to see my friend embarrass herself. Everyone else avoided her in the same way. Why are we always the embarrassing ones, Zoe? Welcome, transfer students! Since it's your first time here, things won't be so smooth. If anything gets uncomfortable, don't hesitate to ask the class president. FYI, the class president is me! <laughs> Everyone was appalled to see her laugh twice as loud. She's usually a bit over the top, but today she seems a bit crazy. Amongst all this, Shinbi, who was used to everything, stood there without the slightest change of expression. 
Zoe gave Lance her million dollar smile and held out her hand. He's like, no. But Lance completely ignored her soft girly hands. Then he marched to his seat with that cold, I cold as ice face of his. Huh? Hey, hello, bonjour, yo, hey, yo! Ignoring his brutal indifference, she followed him. It's really almost admirable the way she turns into an Amazon warrior when she notices cute guys. Hey, good morning. She's at it again after seeing a cute guy. Of course. Hardly surprising now. She started worshipping cute guys since the beginning of the semester. This time she's really determined to seduce one and fill her life with roses. Her willpower is amazing. To be honest, something like this has actually happened before. I think it was the first day Mr. Yujin came to our school. The first day he came, no one ever dreamed that he was a bit kooky. So that day, Zoe made a fuss about finally meeting the Prince Charming of her life. And the very next day, she started hitting on him like crazy. Naturally, the result was devastating. To be honest, since there was a rumor that he likes bones, we did hope for a tiny bit. But even Mr. Yujin, whom we thought was a bit off, couldn't seem to handle Zoe. But a few days later, she bounced right back from the heartbreak. And then she stormed into the infirmary like Medea, ready for revenge. Why? What was the problem? Can't you see my cute face and these fantastic curves on my body? I mean, not to brag, but you already know, don't you? I'm the Madonna of this academy. Unlike what she said, she bore no hint of shame. Actually, she must have been more embarrassed to hear what she... Actually, he must have been more embarrassed to hear what she was saying. She went rattling on without a change in expression. Explain to me! Explain! What is it about me? Why, why that bone thing and not me? So we all worked up menacingly pointed at Mr. Yujin's skeleton model. The skeleton model... Blah, 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 blah. The skeleton model Mr. Yujin was caressing so dearly was called Beatrice. According to him, Beatrice bore the name of an old noble family that traced back to the Middle Ages. He also added that she was an honest and lovely girl who knew how to show her mind as it is. The problem is that she shows everything as it is, even her bones. Are you comparing yourself to Beatrice right now? <laughs> Alright, how laughable. If you really want to know, I'll tell you. You... Yeah, what about me? You have too many useless things. What? I'm talking about that. That. Those tissues in between your skin and bones, especially those around your chest. How useless. Compared to that, everything about Bernice is perfect. She is the ultimate perfection without anything to throw away. She is God's masterpiece. Mr. Yujin shook with excitement as he praised Beatrice. And so he blankly stared at her breasts Mr. Yujin just pointed at. Was I just dumped for having these? In complete shock, she froze at the spot. Leaving Mr. Yujin to whisper his love to Beatrice, Shinbi and I dragged Zoe out from that place. Shinbi and I ended up having to support Zoe as she walked lifelessly back home. Lance coldly ignored Zoe and sat down at his seat, and Yunho, who stood there awkwardly, hesitated and shook her hand. Oh, uh, th thank you. Um, nice to meet you. <laughs> Yunho said while blushing. As soon as she saw that, Zoe squealed and tried to hug Yunho. Thankfully, Shinbi followed and managed to stop her. She's scared. <sighs> Shinbi soon dragged Zoe away, who was breathlessly heaving. Or breathing heavily. Her eyes were still burning with desire. She's not thinking of staying like that the whole day, is she? She, she uh, looks sick. Will she be okay? No, but that's normal for her, so don't worry. She's always been like that. Yunho seemed confused, but soon nodded. He went to an empty seat up front and quietly sat down. But he kept looking at me from his seat. I put my bag down and unconsciously turned around. Even though Zoe wasn't around, no one thought to go over to Lance. I felt like Lance was surrounded by an invisible wall. Well, we are in the same class now. Should I go talk to him? Hey, Lance. What is it? No, uh, <laughs> it just hit me that we're really in the same class now. I still can't believe we're going to take classes together. How are you feeling? It really is. What? You feel the same? Yes. It is as if I am in a dream, too. 
And I hope I wake from it soon. <laughs> that must hurt. Ugh, it's impossible to have a conversation with him. But I can't give up now. Come to think of it, until now I was just busy worrying. But I'd been dreaming about this every day. My dolls have become humans. There were so many things I wanted to do if I could actually talk with my dolls. Now that the matriculation problems are solved, I can actually enjoy this situation. Um, hey Lance, next recess, I'll show you around the building. There are a lot of famous things about our academy. There should be a lot of flowers in the backyard around now. I already know. What? I already know about your life in the academy. You took the flowers in the backyard to your grandpa. And that famous bread in the cafeteria always runs out fast, so you rarely eat it. Did you think I would not know? Huh? How? Because you have already told me. That weird girl I saw earlier is Zoe, and that girl rubbing a file on Yunho's hair is Shinbi. You said you were lucky to have met those friends. I looked by my side and saw Shinbi rubbing a plastic file on Yunho's hair. Yunho was near tears and asked her to stop, but looking at Shinbi's face, it was not going to end soon. I've never seen Shinbi laugh like that. Is she laughing? She looks expressionless to me. No, I can see it. She's having a lot of fun right now. It's really rare to see her like that. Do you notice those things if you were friends? Huh? Uh, yeah, I guess so. After hearing Lance say that, I really felt it. I've become really close to those friends without realizing. Now I can guess what they're thinking from the slightest change in their expressions. But... You will never tell those friends the truth. <laughs> Damn, you're so harsh and blunt. Then again, I am too, in, a, in some ways. Lance looked at me and then turned his head to Yunho, who was being tormented by Shinbi. I could tell what he meant as I turned to see Yunho too. The truth that they are actually dolls, and my hobby I never told anyone about. I froze as I realized that. You were unable to tell them, even though you were close. Th that Everything Lance said out bluntly was true, and that was why I couldn't bear to listen to him. There's nothing I can do. They are my pros- they are my most precious friends, and I do not want to lose them. If I could stay friends with them by not telling them the truth, I will not tell them until the end. Being brutally honest isn't always good. I could feel my voice sinking even as I spoke. Although I value my friends, I knew what I was doing was really hypocritical. But I'm too scared to tell the truth. Well, all right. It is none of my business anyways. You are free to do whatever you wish. And I wish you would think the same. You are indeed my owner, but things are quite different right now. I will go to this academy without making a fuss. Lance added coldly. Ugh, I can feel things won't go smoothly from now on. Wow, I'm going through chapters quickly. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, I put it here. Okay. Sure. Um. Oh, when I saved Cat Named John, it was on Common, but it was on Yunho's route. When it. Oh, I get it. If it's not their corresponding color, then you did something wrong and you need to go back. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad ending. That makes sense. Alright, well, I'm gonna end it here. I skipped quite a bit of stuff because, well, it's kind of necessary in a sense. We've already seen quite a lot of what the beginning is like, but there have been a few different dialogue changes, and that was something I wasn't quite expecting. But I guess the more you play, the more everything starts to slowly unfold, which I guess makes sense, considering I did mention that. But I didn't expect it in the small ways either. I more expected it in the more major ways. But yeah, I guess we'll see where things go from here on out. Later!
most of this because we've already gone through all of it. Right, boys came to life. Meeting all of their different personalities. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. Trying to explain how the fuck they got there. Enrolling some of them. Problems with stuff. Probably like the guardian thing. I don't even recall what's going on now. Oh, yeah, here we go. Now they're in the school with Yuri. Because they figured something out. 